talk about Medem and what it is and what experiences they had and uh, potentially something that you guys could do as well because we will be going back uh, every year. It takes place in January. So without further ado, come on up, folks. The Medem what, Lo Loyola team. <laughs> Give them a hand. Come on. We have, we have two mics, and they'll be sharing the mic, and we'll um, just kind of share the load. Uh, why don't you sit over here? I'm going to sit there because I have to. Here, you take that, and you take that, and we'll, we'll share. Here, hang on. First of all, MEDEM is the largest music conference in the entire world, and as you saw Mike's uh, photography of taking pictures of Japan and Spain, it was definitely things from all over the world. The first night uh, association was, um, uh, let me shut this off. Th that first uh, concert that night, it was featuring the, the city of, uh, or the country of Russia. So there were a lot of Russian museums, there, uh, musicians there and so forth. So uh, it is where people meet together to do deals and for people to kind of get together and find out what's going on in the industry. There was another university. Uh, let me just shut this off so we don't have to be bothered with it. There we go. I'm going to keep that up because this is something we'll go to a little bit later about Nine Inch Nails if we have time. Uh, there were two conferences basically going on. It was kind of costly. so. Uh, uh, the first conference was two days long, and it was called MEDEMNET. And here, it's been going on for 10 years. I've been going to MEDEM since the mid-'90s. And MEDEMNET, the first year, I think took place in 1998. And the two people featured about the internet and music were Liquid Audio and Real Audio. Now, what were those two companies? They were the engine to be able to move music and to stream music and then later video on the internet. And they were the only two there. The next year it became Deutsche, uh, Deutsche Telekom, AT&T, Lucent Technology, a few other companies got involved and now they're talking about the internet all of the time and how it's affecting the entire music business. Now you guys all know about this stuff but it was interesting to hear it from the the main sources, the CEOs that were there that were talking about it and uh, about the future. And one of the things about MedemNet th that they talked about, uh, one of the closing sessions they asked, who are the people that are going to be the movers and the shakers in the next 12 months? And two of the guys without hesitation said they aren't here. They're basically you and the people that are working on things right now. The industry is moving so fast. That's why MEDEM was so interesting because it is a whole different world now than it was when I first went about 15 years ago. When I went there to, uh, I started a record company and I wanted to get in, in from the bottom end. And uh, there were a lot of things I learned. I was basically overwhelmed probably more than these folks. These folks were really good at attending this thing and really taking it in. And what we're going to do is I'm going to just ask a few questions of them and then let it just kind of ride. We got together last week and it was really interesting to have them talk about me, Dem. This is the guide that you get. It, it is costly. Here is a tag that I, I'm wearing right now that everybody had to wear all the time for the night concerts, the day concerts, in the hotels where they had extra concerts. This would cost 1350 euros, right, to replace <coughs> if you lost it. And uh, it didn't cost that much. It cost about $600 when we applied early, but it, the price got more and more. It's quite expensive. But this is the everybody that participated, and this is the great contact book. These people all had access to the uh, list of people in here online. I am getting emails about once a week. Uh, there's blogs going on right now for the participants that you guys could be in, involved in as well. Uh, MedemNet has its own set of blogs. Okay, so I'm going to ask the first question. What were your expectations 
before you went to meet him and were they met? And let's start with whoever. There's a microphone. Go ahead. Um, I, had, I went with no expectations, and so I thought that was the best way to go. I'm, I guess I went with the expectation of being a little bit of France and then and just maybe meeting some people in the industry. But actually, what I gained from it was incredible. I learned more about the music industry within a week of going there than I have really my in my whole life. So, uh, you know, it's, it's an invaluable experience, so thank you. Zach? Uh, yeah, I didn't really know what to expect. I just, I mean, I, I had the idea of, you know, meeting people, maybe, you know, making some connections, internships. That's basically what I thought. Rafe, go for it. <laughs> well, uh, I don't know. I didn't really have any many <coughs> expectations because, I mean, I was with all of you guys when we had the presentation that came uh, last semester on Medem, and that was pretty much my, the only thing I had known about it. And I had, you know, hopes you know, I wanted to get a job, I wanted to meet a bunch of cool people, but I didn't know, really know what to expect. And uh, everything that I got there from it, though, was worth 20 times the amount of my money that I had spent there. What did, you, what did you do there? I mean, what was your biggest thing about what got you where you are now with that? Um, I think it was kind of uh, the fact that everybody there is an important person in their respective fields. Everybody there are decision makers and uh, policy makers for the music industry. So I got to meet and talk with people that really made a difference, not only to my future career, but like people that everybody hears about every day. And um, pretty much just networking through all those people and just building relationships with them. And now I have, you know, I have a Rolodex. You know, I thought, you know, I would never have a Rolodex because of whatever. And now I have a <laughs> And now, I'm, and now I'm, I'm talking with, you know, old people I never would really talk to before, and they're responding to me with, like, really important things to say. Old yeah. people. <laughs> <laughs> your generation. Keenan, oh. what were your expectations? And <laughs> okay. Um, like, I basically, I expected to go there, um, sit through a bunch of seminars, um, hopefully, if I was lucky, strike gold and um, get in with one of these big guys, you know? But um, I went there and, you know, I, I sat in the seminars and everything, and it's so much more than just that, you know? It's so much more than just sitting there and uh, having somebody tell you, oh, this is what it's about. Okay, I'll see you later. I'm gonna go do my real stuff, you know? It's like, um, we went there and you you go to the you go to the conference itself, and there's so many people there. It's it's extremely overwhelming, especially coming in, um, really not knowing what it's about. Um, it's so completely overwhelming. There's so many big guys there, so many big names. BMI Sound, it's, I mean, everybody in the industry is there, you know, trying to get what what they want, you know. So, and then. So we go there, and it's like, <laughs> it's all of that. And then afterwards, there's always a party. And after that party, there's the after party. After that, there's the hotel lobby. You heard me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's just like that. And you don't meet them just at the conference. You really get to connect with them outside at the hotel lobby or the after party. Um, me and uh, David, he's not here right now, but um, he's in New Zealand. Yeah. But... <laughs> David and I, um, we went out to the hotels after a bunch of the parties. We got invited to all these little after parties held by these guys. And I mean, these, I mean, these are big guys. These are guys that we want to be, you know? <laughs> we want to be in their position. And it was just, it was crazy experiencing that. And um, before, before that happened, I didn't, ex I didn't expect that to happen at all, you know? So it was, it was wild. <laughs> By the way, David uh, is not here with us. He's he's studying abroad, and we were going to try to get him online, but uh, we, we're having some internet technicalities. And David just emailed me an hour ago to say he wished he was here with you guys. But uh, we were going to put him on online with us uh, at Medemnet. Corey and I went to some sessions, and and one of the CEOs of Music Now dot was. Uh, 
MP3, no. MP3 com. music. Oh, I think com. it was just MP3. Com, he was being actually. sued Whatever for by some Somewhere. major record <laughs> companies in San Diego, and he was supposed to be a keynote, and he was online. It was like three in the morning in San Diego, and it was really <laughs> high tech stuff. We might see a little bit of this uh, online if we get a chance. Uh, they they've edited some of these conferences for us to see. Corey, what what were your thoughts? I, tell me, I I overheard her calling her dad when we came back to JFK. Tell me what you were saying there. <laughs> I don't know if I remember. Um, well, basically, like I didn't really know what to expect from this. Um, because like I'm a freshman, so I really just have one semester of this school under my belt, and um, I don't have much experience before coming here with like the industry itself. So going to Medem for me was kind of just a way to get my feet wet and kind of understand better what the industry is like, I guess. And um, it was really, really beneficial to me because um, I learned a lot about like what actually exists in the industry. Like I had no idea how many like different kinds of companies there were and how many like levels of every single type of person that exists and so it was I think it was really different for me being a freshman because I only have you know my education so far and I still have three years to go and um, I don't know like exactly what I wanted to do what I want to do um, so I took like the most from learning how to like network and like talk to people I've never really gone out and been in a situation where I have to like go up and introduce myself and be like, hi, I'm Corey. Um, like, what can I do to like become you and everything like that? And it was really um, scary at first because it took a day or two because it, like Keenan said, it's just really overwhelming to be around all these people. And the conference itself was just so big and there were so many people. So it was kind of hard. It took like a day to get used to finding like who to go find, like talk to and um, I kind of just learned that you have to be, like, really open to saying, like, hello and start a conversation about nothing to do with music and then kind of, you know, weasel your way in. And if they're, they're like, interesting and it's, like, a career path that you want to take, you know, start making contact information, hand off your business card. But it's really hard to just go in and, like, expect, like, a job or, you know, a business card out of a situ any situation. So I think for me as – like not having anything to present except for myself and being a music industry student who wants to work. Um, it was really, really different, I think, than a lot of other people. So I didn't have any expectations, and I'm so happy that I went and, like, learned so much. I Corey and Keenan are the two freshmen that went, so they're really kind of green at it, but not really. And the rest of you are juniors and seniors for the most part. Uh, Fifth-year senior. Fifth-year senior, and you graduated, right, Catherine? Catherine was able to go at the very last moment. And uh, anyway, so some of these people were, you know, testing the waters for internships and jobs. This guy landed a job while he was there, and he's going to be working for a guy based out of Seattle and Honolulu, where he's from. So that came out pretty well. And some, other, some of the others, I, I think, if they haven't gotten internships yet, they've made the face-to-face -face contacts and have the business card. Peter, tell us about your expectations. And what um, I went there trying to find a job, and I went about it the whole wrong way at first. I would approach these people and start talking to them, and I would kind of just, like, pitch myself. And then, like what Corey was saying, you really have to find a common ground kind of first. And once you establish that, then you can kind of start weeding your way into what they think, how they think, and how they work. I learned a lot about, like, who I am. I learned a lot about how to network there. I pretty much learned a lot of different things might have a job in this guy, this company called Record Memory, possibly, maybe, but um, yeah, I don't know, it's, I just, I went there with the expectation trying to get that, and then after a day of trying to do that, I realized that's not the approach I should be taking, and um, I would say another thing, I didn't expect the night, like, to be as exciting as it was. <laughs> um, Why are you guys all giggling? You're out till like five in the morning for like I went six to bed days. at ten o'clock every night. <laughs> um, it's it's interesting because the conference is so serious and there's such like a serious air to it the entire time. But then once you go out and these people get like drinking and they will tell you everything you need to know. And it's really interesting <laughs> how that works. You know, it's like you realize like how to establish relationships with these people. 
Like I met a lot, a lot of my like best contacts. I met them in the bars or at these parties. And that's just how it works. Not a bit. Uh, I just kind of wanted to add to that that it's really <coughs> also kind of interesting going there as a student as opposed to somebody who's employed because you are more open to what people have to say and they are. Um, there are very few people that are condescending to you. Like, people are really reasonable and willing to talk to you about whatever you want to talk to them about and answer your questions. And um, uh, I feel like, you know, if you, if you guys could go, if you're planning on going to a big conference like that and getting out in the music industry and networking and learning what that's like, it's a really good ex experience for them because you're doing it before you have all these ulterior motives and you can go there kind of humbly and talk to people and really establish good contacts and um, uh, have like meaningful conversations with people. These people are in a different environment than they are in their offices and they're, they're there to do business but they're there to have a good time as well and they really want to help students is what I think you guys experience from that. They're, they're, they're there legitimately, I mean they really are passionate about their work some people are kind of shy, and they're they're going around th th about their business, and it, they're trying to get a deal, and they're maybe the small person on the block or something. But for the most part, these people that are in these companies are really willing to help. Sarah. Well, yeah, I, I had to say the same thing because as a student, I went in expecting to be a complete non-entity, like you know, just no one would want to talk to you, you know, just kind of like watch and learn, and you don't expect to be able to hold a conversation, you know, with somebody who sailed up to meet him on their yacht. But it, you really, like, it's surprising because they really do want to talk to you. I mean, because you don't already work for someone and you're asking questions instead of trying to, you know, throw yourself in their face. And it's, they really will talk to you. And that was very surprising, but it was a pleasant surprise. Victoria. Yeah. Expectations going over there. I'm a senior, so you know I graduated in May, and I mean I guess I was going kind of looking for a job, internship, something along those lines. But it was really just so much more. I mean, everyone's saying it was completely overwhelming getting there. You know, there's so many people, so many big names. You know, I mean, you have the book that Kimberly showed you of like all these people that are there, and you want to meet all of them. And I mean, you really had to go in, in like onto the floor with kind of like a game plan. And I think it took like the first couple days to get used to it, but. I mean, it was just so immense, and I got so much out of it. And I mean, honestly, like, so much of what I learned was outside of the conference. Like, just meeting people, like, on the street, like, in the bars, at the concerts, at the parties. Like, those are my best contacts. I think, I mean, some of my biggest contacts either at the bar or on the plane home. Like, the plane ride was full of people from Meetem. Like, the guy who's the CEO of Reverb Nation was sitting next to me on my flight home. Like, I mean, I don't know. It was just an awesome experience. And if you all have the opportunity to go next year, you definitely should because it's I mean, the whole industry is different. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I was on the bus going back from Con to the Nice airport where we had to take about a 45-minute ride, and there were two professors from a music <coughs> industry program in Manchester, England, and they said, let's hook up an exchange. So uh, we're in email contact now, and I'm going to be going to Europe this summer, and I'm, I'm probably going to stop off in Manchester. And, and set this up and some of you will probably be able to go over there on study abroad and they'll have some people come over here. They brought 120 students to South by Southwest last year. That's a lot of people coming from England and they paid their own way and they, their approach to South by Southwest was taking groups of bands and doing a full nine yards with them uh, where they had a band, they recorded them, they videoed them, they had websites, they did PR, and they would have a whole team go to South by Southwest to get showcases. And, and that's, uh, we're gonna learn from that, and they'll probably learn from us. One other college went there, Columbia College from Chicago was there, and they had a booth just like us. We, yeah. they yeah. <laughs> What was their approach that was different than ours? Uh, uh, give somebody. Um, well, we went out there kind of to support our school um, in some ways, uh, as well as ourselves. But they went out, um, I guess they set it up as a class, and they were representing artists from their school. 
And so they went out with like demos and tried to get their artists signed and stuff. And um, like just being in Medem, you don't really go there to get signed and make deals if you're just an up and coming artist. Like it's really a business um, kind of setting. And so they kind of approached it in the wrong way. And um, I don't know if I should say this, but they weren't very nice to us. <laughs> Um, they, the, one of the first things they said to us was, we're not here as students. And that kind of really shocked me because, I mean, yeah, we, we would like to say that we weren't there as students too, but at the same time, we're there like as a face for like all of you guys too because um, we are all individually, like in some form, the future of the industry. And, you know, they went out there not supporting themselves, but supporting their artists, I guess. And I don't think they set themselves up for success because they were – so close-minded into what they wanted to get out of the, the experience. And I mean, you're paying so much money to not only get to France, but to just be in the conference. And they were trying so hard to be something that they aren't. And I think it was way more important for us and like way more beneficial to be students, you know, talking to people and learning what the industry is about and not trying to get our feet into it the wrong way. So, I mean, it was really interesting seeing how the two schools kind of went there differently. I was trying to put them <coughs> together, and it really never worked out. And and and, sh and Corey is right. They, I I went there the first time very naively myself as a professional, uh, having a real green record company of about five CDs, and these people didn't want to carry five CDs around with them in their suitcases. Uh, they didn't want to be seeing somebody that had just a couple of CDs. They wanted to see a record company that would have twenty five to thirty CDs. So. That's my, that was my major lesson when I went in 96 or 7 or whenever it was. And so what did I do? I went out and made 20 more CDs within the next three or four years. I just worked my butt off and recorded them all here at Loyola in the studio, and uh, in the old studio. And uh, all of a sudden, I go back uh, right before Katrina in 2004. I brought uh, about eight students over from here, and uh, I made a deal. And it was a deal, again, over a beer. The German, <laughs> the German community, they had their own little record. Uh, they had a big booth. It, remember, in Europe, they're socialistic countries. And these record companies and these PR people and all of these agents, they get to go and get paid to go because it's economic development for their country. And they put out a lot of money. Our booth was free to us because we had to spend 650 bucks plus per person. But there, the socialistic country will support the industry and will help. America had to go on their own. We, there were a lot of Americans over there. But anyway, the German country was right around the corner from us. And at 4 o'clock was the magic hour. You know, of course, the Germans like beer. And they had a keg at their, at their booth every, every day at 4 o'clock. And that was the start of the end of the day and the beginning of the night. <laughs> but getting back to this American, uh, these companies going over from America, they have a rough time. It's very, very costly for a small company like my own to go over with Reed Wick, who went with me. And uh, what did you guys, I noticed that quite a few of you talked or w were hanging out with the independent I2, what's it, what's A2 it called? I A2IM. And tell us about that. Who wants to, who was there? I'll, I'll take Ray? this first. Yeah. Um, I was the guy, the, the whore of A2IM, I guess you could say. I was hanging out there <laughs> every day for hours. Um, they were the American Independence, and there was a good, I think, 60 companies uh, that were in this whole booth area. So, I mean, any business that you need to do, you could find somebody there that would have, you know, a catalog or something that you're looking for. And that's the area where I met with Warren Wyatt of World Sound Entertainment, who I eventually got my job with. And I was hanging out there every day. That's where the inauguration was. And every foreign country person came to the American booth to see it. It was huge. That video that we had was didn't even give it justice, how many people came to that. But the American independents, uh, by getting together, uh, they were able to get more done than all the other countries. And other countries were coming to American booth just to see what we were up to because of the community that was uh, built out of nothing for it. And you had people from manufacturing, publishing. I mean, really every part of the music industry was in that one area. And I saw more deals going on there every minute than anywhere else. And I saw 
uh, Glenn Barclay. He does all the booking for Disney and Anheuser. And I saw him uh, handshake on uh, like a $20 million deal on uh, getting a bunch of artists to play at Walt Disney World or in Epcot. That was just kind of random to see, but y just because it's independent doesn't mean it's small scale. Like they make big business happen in there, so. Catherine, you went as a graduate at the last minute. What were your impressions? Well, I had about a day between finding out I could go to France and getting on the plane, so I didn't have much time uh, to prepare, to say the least. And I'd never been to Europe, so I really wasn't sure what to expect. Um, I mean, it was crazy. I graduated from here, undergrad with a business degree, and then I got my MBA from here also. So I thought I knew something, maybe just a tiny bit about business and how it works. But we went over there, and it was it was insane. Like everybody else said, it's the real business happens over drinks. And the amount that these people drink and do these serious deals <laughs> is beyond my comprehension. But it was amazing. I mean, it was just a great learning experience. And it wasn't, it wasn't boring. It wasn't like a bunch of forum sessions. You just go and sit and want to rip your hair out. Like, it was a great time. No, I'm serious. <laughs> it, was, it was a good time. You really got to learn a lot and figure out uh, what's actually going on in the industry and sort of what's coming next. And Laura? Sorry, I'm sick, so I sound kind of gross. But um, <laughs> I kind of went, I'm a senior, so I really kind of went in not expecting much. I've never been to France. Um, and <laughs> French people don't like me, sorry. Um, <laughs> so I went in um, kind of with a nothing to lose attitude. I don't know if that's good or bad, but I did. Um, I was like, I need to get an internship. This is my one chance um, that I need to get an internship. I got one, and I left happy. And I met the one guy from Dallas, uh, which is where I'm from, in a bar. And he introduced me to all these people. It was an American bar, so they were very nice to me. And, um, <laughs> and so, yeah, a lot of networking happens over drinks. So um, you should learn how to drink now so you can get a job. <laughs> don't, don't get us wrong. This, is <laughs> this wasn't a drinking spree. Come on, guys. <laughs> This is a fine Jesuit institution. We have to keep it clean here. Go ahead. I mean, not, you know, not necessarily drink, but learn how to like schmooze. You know, talk to people. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's you got to be social. I mean, that's that was core, like they were saying before. I mean, it, but like the people from Chicago, back to them. Uh, you know, they're like, oh, uh, we don't like these parties, but like, it's like the best part to do all your business. And by the way, it was all free. They, they had spreads of food and hors d'oeuvres and open, open bars bar. and music. And it was, the nighttime was absolutely amazing. But you guys did a good job. We always had somebody staff the booth the whole time. And we had people, like you saw in the video, we had people all the time at the booth. And there were contacts. That's how you met Warren, I think, originally, wasn't it? Or yeah, he came. He came by the booth. We had several people come by, and they just wanted to see what was what Loyola was all about. And in that way, they were able to, uh, you know, communicate and interact. And it was really, I, I was pleasantly surprised to see that. Somebody else over there. Um, the one, what, what are some of the things that you guys would suggest to these people that you might want to do different or be thinking about ahead of time? Bring business cards. Yes. I think I was the only idiot in the group who did not bring business cards. <coughs> regret, regret. I mean, thankfully it didn't turn out bad because I did network with a few people and I have some contacts, but I really felt the need for business cards. So if you go, bring business cards and bring a lot of them. And you what do you guys out. all do with your business cards that you got? What are you doing with them? File them and email the people. I mean, like, as soon as, like, the week after we came back, I sat down and emailed every single person who was not staff one of the people. But the people I really wanted to stay in touch with or get potential internships and stuff. And, like, I've already been offered, like, two or three internships. And I think that just you have to follow up because they're not going to follow up with you. Like, no offense. Um, <laughs> but you are the small student. So be sure to don't lose your business cards, I guess, the ones you collect. Otherwise, you're screwed. Post me dem management is crucial yeah. for what you guys need to do. <coughs> Mike. Yeah, and uh, free also. Uh, you should really try and plan before you go there and don't try and plan while you're there because
because there's so much going on. And um, if you don't really know what you want to get out of it, you're probably not going to figure it out until it's too late. So have an idea of s like w at least like one goal like that you want to accomplish or one thing you want to do and be like really prepared to do that. Um, and then just kind of go with the flow because time passes very quickly and it's not like free beer and Big Ray Moss and Supreme Sasha. So, <laughs> so. I saw a lot of people going through this book trying to organize what they might be able to go and make a contact with, but it, as you can see, it's, it's overwhelming. There were over 8,000 people there, and that's a real off year. Uh, when I first went there, there were about 12, over 12,000 people. The economic times are really tough, and it hit hard. The airfares in 2004 were $450, and this time it was over $800 as a group ticket. So times are a little more expensive now. But uh, that that's uh, business cards are one of the <laughs> things. Anything else? I would just say loosen up in this industry. You can't really have like a super formal business attitude all the time. And uh, I made made a lot of really good contacts. But my favorite contacts I made were at night when I was you know feeling a little bit loose, loosened up. And I I met um, the management for Wu Tang. I met a lot of reggae promoters and booking agents from uh, Station. And uh, all those people I met um, just kind of being myself and being real friendly. And that's, I think that's just good advice for any time you're in a music industry situation. Don't put business at the forefront of the table. Kind of wait till you make friends first, I guess. Don't expect to sleep at all. Yes, don't <laughs> sleep. <coughs> don't sleep because you might miss something. Yeah, <laughs> you miss out on meeting people. <laughs> yeah, literally, I went to bed at 7 and woke up at 9 every <laughs> Could you guys <laughs> trust every person that you met? No, <laughs> especially <laughs> ladies. Yeah. Be careful. <laughs> with with Lou? <laughs> As a girl, <laughs> expect to be hit on. Like, expect it. And, I mean, honestly, I think all, almost all of us. Go ahead. Well, I think, <laughs> I, I think all the girls, like, kind of dealt with the people you wanted to meet, who you wanted to network with, who you were interested in getting to meet, basically. And, like, you kind of tend to push past it and, like, kind of let them know you weren't for it. Really? That you weren't for it. And, I mean, you know, eventually you, they realize you're about business. You get a business card. You can contact them. But, I mean, like, it's a rush of party. Like, ten guys inside of some sketchy party in their <laughs> hotel room. Like, I mean, it was the works. And you just have to kind of go there being smart. Like, don't be naive. But still, like, be loose and be calm about it. Like, realize, you know, take it for what it is. Be assertive. Yeah, be assertive and just, like, you know, be aware of your surroundings. With the French people. <laughs> but, um, I mean, you're in another country. You know, a lot of us didn't speak the language. I think me and Maddie probably spoke the most French of everyone. Yeah. And, yay. <laughs> and, um, yeah, definitely be aware of where you are because people are out to scam you. Like, they see you. They realize you don't speak French. We're Americans. <coughs> we're targets. So just be smart. We had a, a, a woman student in 2004 lose her wallet. Uh, by a friendly man, and she got ripped off. And it was a really kind of a tough situation and not having any money. And, of course, Uncle Sandy had to come to the rescue. <laughs> the same with Sarah. <laughs> no, she didn't lose her wallet. <laughs> I did not lose my wallet. <laughs> Do we have any other comments from this group? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Pretty much talk to anyone that you see. Like, just go up there and stick your neck out because you never really know who you're going to meet. Mike and I ended up meeting this guy who produced the film Narc and Run for Monaco at Angel Film Festival every year. We ended up hanging out with him until like 5 in the morning, and we made a great contact. Off, <laughs> long story. <laughs> and um, just, you know, stick your neck out there. It's a it's really valuable experience if you just go there and be yourself and do what you do. I want to also say don't get discouraged. Like, I met people who just basically, like, pissed me off so much. But, like, <laughs> no, like seriously, you learn what you don't want to do. Like, I learned what I don't want to do, which helps me figure out what I want to do. So, I mean, you learn a lot about what you want to do in your career and your life and how you want to, uh, like, work within your, like, business relations. 
right? I mean, if anybody's, like, thinking about going to meet them, I mean, we were talking a lot about what we've done, but, like, it's completely different than, like, what the team's going next year. Um, for anybody who's thinking about it, like, yeah, it costs a small amount of money, and I spent, like, all the money that I personally had, but it was worth it. It paid for itself in the first day, and it was really awesome. And, I mean, keep in mind, like, they have concerts scheduled for, like, 4 in the morning, every morning there. And these are artists that might not mean much to us, but there was a Russian artist there that had sold over 100 million copies of albums in her lifetime. I mean, that, that shuts down, in, like, most American artists. Donovan and was there. Yeah, and, I mean, there's just all kinds of great people there. And the money is worth it. The experience was the best thing I could have ever done in my entire life. I mean, and just because of what I did this meet them, I have a job that's sending me back for next year's meet them. And, I mean, I don't speak a lick of French. I couldn't even pretend. And I was still managed to, uh, oh, <laughs> I was still, I was still able to, you know, have fun and talk with people and, 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 May it, we? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, honestly, like, it's the, it's the best experience ever. And, and if anybody's like slightly thinking about it, like, give us some actual thought. Like it was, it's actually worth it. And, you know, just a small group of us that went there, we were able to shut down an entire another college of students with just our skills and abilities. The program we have here at Loyola is really is that special. And I didn't really have a concept of that until I went to France. And you talk with people from around the world. First question they ask any of us is, what are you doing here? You're in college. You're not trying to <coughs> make a deal. You're not trying to make money. You're not trying to do anything. We were just there to let people know that we're here to take over the industry after them, and everything is going to be OK. We're not going to screw it up. <laughs> and I, don't, I know that everybody here is not going to really screw that up. And so I just want to tell everybody, give it a thought, and definitely go. It's worth all the money that you will ever spend there. And yeah, we can party. Well, at this time, we just have a few more minutes. I, I do want to make a presentation. We'll, we'll have some questions in a second, but I do have this award going to one of these people here, and you probably know who it's going to already. Uh, it's Mr. Hustler of Me Dem, and this goes to Rafe. Congratulations, Rafe. He hustled, and he got a job. And he, he hustled more than I've ever seen anybody hustle at Medem before. And if anything, he deserves it. So you might be that person next year. <coughs> One more thing, this was a class. It was contemporary issues. They get three hours credit for it. They did have to, some still have to, uh, present uh, some information about what they did, their contacts, and so forth. So it is worth three credits. And as one mother of one of these students told me through an email, this is worth the $2,300, $2,500 that was paid because that's three credits right there. And it's part of your BS program under contemporary issues. And uh, I will be doing this next year. And I'll probably make it a little more of a stringent class. But it's the, the trip by itself is worth three credit hours. And I'm just, you know, punching it a little bit to make it worthwhile to the administration. Uh, are there any last other thoughts? Uh, I want to let you know that hardly anybody knew anybody here when we first got together, and they became yeah. good friends. Okay, are there any questions out there? Yes, Tuck. No, I, I, what, I'll, what I'll be able to do is include you in the group. We could get group airfare together, and you get a group rate from Medem as well. We got a bit of a rate uh, reduction, not much. It's very expensive, but uh, I would be glad to do that. I mean, that's basically what Catherine did. Yeah, I was going to say, um, I've graduated twice from here, and obviously I'm still not in school. But I went, and I wasn't sure if it was going to be a little awkward because everybody's still in school. Like, I'm not a student. I didn't have a job, I just graduated in December. But I went and I actually got a really promising lead. I've been in touch with several times since and um, hopefully it'll lead to a job in less than a month. So like you could go and it's almost, I'm not gonna say better to not be a student because they had like great opportunities and everybody's willing to speak with them. But like even just going with the students was great because I mean you just graduated too, you know, you have time to go with the other students. But it, it was a lot of fun and it was totally worth it. So I would say still go with them. Get to meet a lot of people too, so it was fun. Your Honor, 
the same note, I mean, there's a lot of people that do go there by themselves. A lot of musicians were there from all over the world. And th just because you're not part of a company doesn't mean you don't have business there. I mean, you, you can really make anything happen there. I mean, there's thousands of people that don't even know what they're doing there. They're just there because the company told them to go. You talk to those people, you make a contact with them, and because of that, I got two tickets to the World Cup in South Africa. I'm not going to South Africa. <laughs> Pretty much tickets. But, I mean, you just talk to these people. You don't even talk about business. They just give you things. You can just talk, just relationship building. That's just all it is. You can get free stuff there. That's a lot of people. <laughs> Any other questions that we have? Yes. <laughs> you want to buy them? <laughs> talk later. Other questions? <laughs> well, thank you, folks, <laughs> for... Uh, oh, yeah. Sorry. I mean, it's kind of it's kind of give or take because the conference starts around ten and people just kind of show up. But keep in mind, like when they have concerts at <coughs> four in the morning, you're not going to bed until like five or six. And I, yeah, I think a few of it, no, none of us really got eight hours of sleep ever, <laughs> and it's worth it. And we were getting up, you know, some of us would be really driven to get up around nine or ten in the morning, and then there'd be a couple people, won't say who, would show up around four, a little hungover, and you'd still get business done. I mean. Business happens from 9 in the morning <laughs> until 2 in the morning. So what time you wake up really doesn't make a difference on business. I guess I was really naive when I said that. <laughs> uh, one thing I learned, I'm going to bring a second person with me so I don't have to do it all myself. Any other questions from the group? Thank you much uh, for coming. Thank you. Thank you.